The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, welcome. This is Sean Rooney, the Chief Executive Officer of Leading Age Services Australia, and the title of this presentation is an overview of the Aged Care Legislated Review. Uh, the purpose of this presentation really is to brief LASER members with a high-level summary of the legislated review of aged care reforms that was uh, released by government uh, just yesterday. Uh, this presentation will basically just cover off on some background to the review, key findings, uh, some commentary on the recommendations and the government's response and also LASER's planned activities. So just by way of background, uh, living Longer Living Better reforms uh, have been in place since 2012. Uh, in the legislation, there is a independent review called for at the five year mark, uh, and that has now been conducted by David Tune, the chair of the Aged Care Sector Committee. Uh, the review was to focus on the key targets of the reforms, including uh, consumer choice, access to services, pricing arrangements, consumer contributions and the like. In the reform process, there were 145 submissions received by the reviewer. There was a number of workshops and engagements with uh, um, uh, consumers, providers and, and um, key stakeholder groups, as well as bilateral discussions of which LASER participated on. And as uh, mentioned earlier, the review was released on the 14th of September with 38 recommendations. So just a, a quick insight into the key findings of the review. It would be no surprise to members that uh, the review has found that our industry is an industry in transition. One of the main challenges uh, for policy in this space is planning for growth uh, and that aged care does require further reform to become a more consumer-centred system. Uh, specifically, there's um, uh, consistent with the ageing in place principle within the reform agenda, we're now seeing an increased need for more high-level care at home, and it notes specifically that a meeting projected future demand requires additional investment by government beyond that that's currently planned, and also that the current planning mechanisms are not going to deliver sufficient services in the long term, and so therefore a key issue for government and industry is how the increase in demand will be financed and the costs be shared. Uh, the report also found that the, the reforms have been successful in moving the um, Australian aged care system along the continuum towards a more consumer demand driven system, uh, but notes that there's further reforms required. Uh, and it's looking to build on the reforms to create a policy environment in which the government can consider removing supply constraints. And uh, at the end of the day, all of this is in alignment with uh, the reform uh, direction around consumer-centred care. So I'll touch now on the uh, the recommendations, uh, just for a few notes before we, we dive into that. Firstly, it's always important to recall, remember that these are recommendations only. Um, they're not government policy. It, it's the role of government and others to now consider uh, the recommendations. And uh, obviously, um, there's a fair bit of heavy lifting that would be required to transition these recommendations in some instances into government policy and legislation. More often than not, these types of reports actually uh, raise more questions than they answer. And in, in some parts that uh, plays out uh, today. And also, um, they also would require more detail and analysis. And uh, also, at times there's very limited discussion on how you would actually implement some of these recommendations. And finally, in me presenting the recommendations, I'll really offer limited commentary around potential positions that LASER may take in response to the recommendations. This really, at this point, is just to get some information out to members so they're aware of the types of things that have been recommended. So the first category of recommendations we'll look at is with regards to the supply of aged care services. So recommendation one, uh, basically is a recommendation that would look to implement changes that would maximise the, avail the availability of offline residential care places to consumers. So this is actually the places that uh, have been mothballed, for want of a better term, uh, by providers for a range of reasons. And the, the view is that um, if those uh, offline places are in areas of high demand, there should be a mechanism to make those available to consumers. Uh, recommendation two uh, notes that the, um, the government would look to maintain control in the medium term over the number and the mix of aged care places in res care and home care. Uh, 
uh, but that would be done in conjunction with a suite of recommendations uh, numbered 3 to 10. So in those uh, suite of recommendations, uh, there is a recommendation that ACAR would be discontinued and that the, uh, the allocation of places would uh, have a new mechanism to do that, uh, but it would be done so in a way that would ensure supply in uh, thin markets where there was limited uh, service provision or competition. So that's recommendations three and four. Uh, recommendation five looks to increase the proportion of high care home care packages, uh, notwithstanding that the proportion would increase, the total number of packages would not change. So that would just be a substitution of lower care, lower level packages for higher level packages. Uh, and recommendation six looks to increase access to high level home care via a temporary allocation of home care packages where a res care place was not being used. So in practice, this is suggesting that uh, if there were um, vacant residential care packages, uh, places, uh, then the funding that would be applied to those on a temporary basis would be allocated uh, to need uh, with regards to high care home care packages. Uh, recommendation seven suggests that there would be an introduction of a level five in the home care package program and this really reflects what uh, uh, people in the industry would be seeing that um, people who choose to age in place uh, as they get older and have greater acuity and more complex and chronic conditions, the current level four package uh, does not provide sufficient uh, coverage to meet their needs. Uh, recommendation eight is a review of the existing respite arrangements in the context of uh, proposed charge changes to ACAR. And then recommendation nine uh, looks to propose a change to the uh, provision ratio uh, to populations uh, aged 75 plus. Now, the current uh, ratio is for uh, basically 125 places per thousand people over the age of 70. That target is set to be reached in 2021. And so beyond that, uh, there's a recommendation that uh, that would ratio would now be applied to people aged 75 years and over. And in that context, you would then consider uh, a change in the mix of uh, residential uh, care places and high care places with respect to the, um, the change in the ratio. And that was recommendation 10. So moving on to uh, fees and consumer contributions uh, category recommendations. As a, the first recommendation, number 11, is really just to ensure that there's pricing information provided on the My, My Age Care portal by providers that enables consumers to uh, compare information. Uh, but in recommendation 12, uh, there is some changes proposed to the uh, home care fees, both the naming and structure of those fees. So uh, one element is to rename the basic daily fee as the basic care fee, uh, and then require that providers would charge the basic care fee for the provision of home care services, whilst also requiring that providers charge the income tested care fee for the provision of home care services and make the value of the basic care fee proportionate to the value of the home care package, whilst also retaining an upper limit related to the value of the single aged pension. Recommendation 13 then looks at including the full value of the owner's home in the means test for residential care where there is no protected person in that home. Uh, this speaks to the uh, uh, finding uh, in the review looking at uh, increased contributions by consumers to the cost of their care commensurate with their ability to do so. Uh, recommendation 14 looks at some recommendations with regards to residential care fees. Particularly, it would require that providers charge the minimum basic daily fee in residential care, retain the cap on the full value of the basic daily fee in res care for low means residents, uh, whilst allowing providers to charge a basic a higher basic daily fee for those non low means residents. And that uh, in charging that fee, if it was over $100 per day, that would be need to be approved by the Aged Care Pricing Commissioner. Uh, also, it was recommended that there'd be a requirement that the maximum basic daily fee be published on the My Aged Care website and the provider's website and provided to uh, uh, prospective residents. Our recommendation 15 looks to abolish the annual and lifetime caps on income tested care fees in home care and the means tested care fees in residential care, again commensurate with uh, 
the desire to see increased contribution from consumers to the cost of their care commensurate with their means. Our recommendation 16 is an introduction of mandatory consumer contributions for services under the CHSP uh, and that these consumer contributions would be standardised according to an individual's financial capacity. And this would basically deal with pro current price inequities between the CHSP and the uh, home care program. Recommendation 17 sees the government uh, looking to inform consumers of the value of the subsidy that is provided for their care to bring transparency so uh, uh, consumers can actually see how much subsidy is being provided by government. Uh, moving on to the next category of recommendations, this is with respect to accommodation payments. So recommendation 18 uh, requires uh, providers to publish information on the My Age Care uh, site in a way that assists informed choice by consumers and uh, recommendation 19 uh, looks at the role of the aged care pricing commissioner. Uh, the intent here is that the commissioner would be retained uh, with some changes to the function. Uh, one of those changes would be to see an increase in the uh, uh, threshold for the refundable deposit from 550k to 750k uh, or an equivalent daily payment. Uh, within that there would also be um, an automatic link between the future maximum accommodation payment and the median house prices, and then expanding the pricing commissioner's role to include providing independent assessment of other fees, such as the additional service fees and uncapped, uncapped basic daily fees that were mentioned earlier. Uh, the next category is the protection of lump sum accommodation payments, which was one of the uh, key uh, areas implemented in the Living Longer, Living Better reforms. Uh, the recommendation is that the, the bond guarantee scheme be maintained uh, with some changes. Uh, some of those changes would include that the uh, res care providers would be levied uh, to recoup all the costs of default events where the total amount, amount of those events exceeded a threshold and is recommended $5 million in any fiscal year. That there be a process for notifying defaults that exceed that threshold and uh, that the cost of the levy that would be applied to providers and that the costs of the scheme that were triggered prior to the reform commencement date would not be recouped. Uh, recommendation 21 looks at the uh, prudential standards uh, and, and in residential aged care and makes some recommendations uh, really asking uh, industry and government to consider what's been put forward by a recent review conducted by Ernst & Young uh, and in that uh, the issues that would sought to be addressed would be potential gaps in information received by government and strengthening standards regarding uh, liquidity, capital ad ad adequacy, uh, disclosure and, and governance. Uh, the next category is uh, access to services. Now the recommendations here are basically uh, recommendations um, really look at uh, better support and services for consumers. There's suggestions around um, enhancements to my aged care, looking at um, advertising campaigns, uh, having third parties that would assist uh, people navigate the system, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Interestingly, uh, recommendation number 27 uh, looks to um, the government to integrate both the RAS and the ACAT assessment workforces. And then in uh, recommendation number 28, it says upon the uh, integration of those workforces and commensurate upon the outcomes of any review of the aged care funding instrument or an equivalent mechanism that the government could uh, use the integrated RAS and ACAT assessment workforce to then provide third party assessment of an ACFI or equivalent mechanism. Now obviously that's a contentious issue for industry and uh, would require a, a lot more uh, work and consideration. Uh, recommendation 29 uh, would see the government and providers work together to improve access to wellness and rehabilitation activities. Uh, to provide greater choice and better support for consumers to live independently and that's consistent with the reform agenda and there's many activities currently underway in that space. And then uh, recommendation 30 calls for a review of the uh, national screening and assessment form. The uh, next category is the um, equity of access category. Uh, there's a number of recommendations here really looking at uh, particular uh, cohorts within the Australian population and how we might better meet their needs. Uh, I won't uh, spend time going through those line by line, but on the screen you can see specific uh, 
uh, initiatives and recommendations and the related numbers. Uh, and so basically looking to enhance access for specific groups. Uh, the next area for recommendations is the aged care workforce. Uh, recommendation 37 uh, basically says we need to work uh, together in the sector uh, and across other sectors to ensure that uh, education and training in our industry is responsive to the sector's needs. Uh, many uh, members would be aware that the government has put aside $2 million for an industry-led task force to create and implement a workforce strategy that's uh, basically picked up in recommendation 38 uh, with some suggestions around how that might be uh, enacted. And then um, that really does cover off the total recommendations. As I said up front, uh, I wasn't going to provide a particular commentary or response to each of the recommendations. The intent here was really just give a very quick overview for members. Uh, now I'll talk about the government's response. So in tabling the uh, review report last night, the government welcomed the report. Uh, it stated that the government will consider the review findings and the recommendations, uh, but also uh, disclosed that this work would be um, uh, conducted in the context of another group that's currently working in Prime Minister and Cabinet looking at the ageing agenda in Australia more broadly. Uh, last night um, uh, the government did announce a couple of specifics uh, with regards to the tune review and other issues in the industry, uh, those being um, they ruled out uh, two recommendations, recommendation 13 and 15. Uh, these were the recommendations with regards to uh, including the family home and means testing and also the removal of annual and lifetime caps. The government also announced that there would be 6,000 additional um, home care packages made available uh, at the high care level, uh, and that $20 million would be made available for improvements to uh, the My Age Care portal, uh, specifically around um, access for consumers. Uh, the government also announced it would release national home care priority queue information for consumers and that uh, information was released this morning and we're currently reviewing that. And uh, the government also announced that the Workforce Strategy Task Force would be chaired by Professor John Pollars uh, and hopefully we'll be able to press on with that, that important work. Interestingly, um, in discussions with uh, the Minister's Office last night and the Department today, there is still no process or timetable being provided to uh, industry for consultation uh, at this point in time. So next steps. Uh, basically, uh, we've been engaging with the media and providing an initial response to the review report. We'll write to the ministers to also give some um, uh, high level thinking. Uh, we're now considering the review reports, uh, findings and recommendations in detail and working on a, a discussion paper for our members. This discussion paper will include mapping the review recommendations to the aged care sector, work for, uh, sector roadmap, uh, whilst also identifying what we believe are the key issues arising from the recommendations. Uh, this discussion paper will then be considered by our members uh, via the state member advisory committees and our advisory groups across home care and res care and the like, and other member groups within LASER. Uh, further actions that we would consider through that consultation is to get some um, industry expertise to do some research and some modelling if required, uh, looking to conduct member forums on specific issues, for example around funding, uh, potentially conduct a chairs and CEOs forum uh, to consider the reforms, uh, and then also look to establish a laser reforms review advocacy working group that would take the uh, outputs of our, our member engagement and, and then work with us uh, on a strategy on how we might advocate and influence decisions that government may make and then any other activity is required. Um, in parallel to that, we're working with other stakeholders, obviously AXA and the Guild and the, the consumer groups to uh, look for common ground on advocacy with the intent that the combination of those things would enable us to deliver a comprehensive response uh, to the government and stakeholders that would offer our insights uh, from a provider perspective, but also solutions to some of the issues identified in the report. So for members, uh, the next steps really is to review the materials that we've provided and also uh, the um, review report. Uh, consider the key issues from your perspective and then engage in our member consultation processes. And the starting point for that uh, you'll see on the screen here is the uh, state managers in each of the states and you have their names and uh, email addresses there. Uh, and also um, 
uh, our policy and advocacy general manager, who's Canberra-based, is uh, Kate uh, Lawrence Haynes, and you can also contact her to register your interest in being engaged in, in the discussion and engagement on um, on our response to uh, to the review. So, look, just uh, finally, in summary, uh, the review rep report actually provides a status report regarding the progress of aged care reforms in Australia, gives us some insight into what's working and what's not, and a suite of recommendations across access and funding and workforce and some of the mechanics of the systems and processes of the industry uh, on where to next. Importantly, this actually gives us an independent evidence base and that, that actually confirms our industry's concerns around the current uh, system settings not being geared to meet future demand. Uh, no doubt you'd, you'd appreciate that the government's decisions informed by this review will have significant implications for our industry and that uh, LASER is committed to working with you, our members, on further in-depth analysis of the recommendations and um, the advocacy planning and delivery to ensure that we're uh, influencing decisions that would benefit uh, providers and consumers alike. So uh, on that note, let me just say thank you for your time. I hope you found this of use as a way to communicate uh, quite a, a lot of information, but as said up front, uh, this is important for our industry uh, this information is provided not so much to give uh, commentary uh, with regards to what's being recommended, but more just as a quick way to share uh, this with members in an efficient and effective manner. And we look forward to working with you further as we uh, proceed to engage with you to uh, really unpick the, um, the recommendations in detail and look to see how we can uh, ensure that we have a, an accessible, affordable, quality uh, aged care system that's delivering uh, care and services for older Australians. So thank you very much.